Welcome to part five, proteins and enzymes. In this tutorial, we're gonna look at the secondary structure of proteins, which we know is um, related to the um, H bonding between neighboring um, amino acid groups within the, the polypeptide chain. Let's get started. Um, so the secondary structure, right, will have regular folding and it's in localized regions of the backbone, right? So the whole thing about close proximity. And really, it's about the carbonyls and the amino groups in our backbone. And H bonding is the deal here. Secondary structure is all about H bonding within the polypeptide backbone. Now it comes in two flavors. We have the alpha helix, where the polypeptide backbone twists and then we have the beta sheet where it's more of a folding and we get these parallel um, sheets. And so let's look at these two more closely. So on this left side, right, this is our alpha helix. So we look at the um, primary structure, the amino acid sequence, and then we notice that as it spirals, we can get H bonding, right, right here between the amine group um, of the amide and the carbonyl of the carboxylic acid. So this um, H bonding between neighboring amino acids in the peptide chain can create the spiraling. And then here's just another diagram showing the same thing, right? So here we see our alpha helix, and then here is the H bonding. I think it's a little little clearer to see in this second diagram. So anytime you see within a protein structural this spiraling ribbon, then the author is communicating to you um, secondary structure of alpha helix. The other alternative is the beta sheet. Now the beta sheet, um, it looks, it has this ribbon quality right here so we'll see it here. This is our beta sheet. Um, so it folds back on, on itself. And then notice this, like, um, this angled quality, right? So if we look at the beta sheets, we see that that folding leads to this like vertical kind of linear quality as opposed to the circular spiraling of the alpha helix. And so the beta sheets, we'll see that um, silk and spider webs are formed with um, beta sheets. And so that's why they're so iridescent. As the light comes in and hits the silk or the spider web, it gets reflected back. And that reflection of light is a consequence of the secondary structure of the proteins that create silk and um, spider webs, and that's what uh, makes them so sparkly, is that the beta sheets are reflecting the light. And so then, once again, in here, we can see that we have the H bonding between, um, between the, the neighboring R groups, or not, excuse me, the uh, neighboring amino acids. Okay, all righty. So let's look a little more closely at the secondary structure. So the secondary structure is all about alpha helix and beta sheets. So let's look at those a little more closely and compare. Now, what we'll see is that um, the secondary structure dis um, distinguishes several different types of um, fibrous proteins. For example, um, fibrous proteins we'll see are structural proteins. So they tend to be water insoluble, and there's often small fibrils twist together into larger bundles. You could think of it as very similar to a rope. And if we look at the structure down here, we can see an example. We can see that their smaller fibrils are then twisted into larger bundles. And we could see where that would give strength and support. Um, the number of disulfide bonds will affect, affect the hardness um, and flexibility. And so I think intuitively we can recognize, right, that as we increase the disulfide, 
um, bridges, we increase the stiffness. So if we're comparing our fingernails to our hair, we would expect to find more um, disulfide bridges in our fingernails than our hair. And that's when we do hair straightening or perms. That's basically what we're doing is we break the disulfide bridges and then we um, make sure everyone knows what that looks like, right? And then we reform them. And sulfur, when sulfur is bonded to organic molecules, it tends to have a kind of a stinky smell. And then, as I mentioned on the previous page, silk and spider webs, those have the, um, the, the beta sheets. The, um, the important thing to note about the fibrous proteins in the secondary structure is that there is um, only alpha helixes or beta sheets um, in fibrous proteins, right? So we get one or the other, not both. And then here's an, um, a, a schematic of collagen, a, an example of a fibrous protein. And notice how there is um, a combining of the three alpha helixes, right? So you can really just think about, I think ropes are a really good example from our life experience. Um, and fibrous proteins are a big deal. Um, here are some examples of um, different fibrous proteins and then different places that they occur in, um, in animals and their function. So noticing the keratins show up for skin and wool and hooves and silk. The collagens are more the connective tissue the elastins as well, ligaments, um, myosin are found in muscle, and fibrin help to, um, for blood clots. So that concludes um, our tutorial on the secondary structure. The main thing to keep in mind is the alpha helix versus the beta sheet, and that it's H bonding within the polypeptide backbone. Um, please take some time now to work a few homework problems to reinforce your understanding.